I am in an old quarry in New Jersey, and there's a really special architectural story to be told here. We wanted to make a design that rose to the level of this profound place. It is truly an amazing story. So we started, first of all, by creating a museum that works closely with the quarry. Not only are there exhibits inside, laboratories and other spaces that you learn from about the dinosaurs and their ultimate fate, you see the quarry from the museum and you're enticed and invited to go down to dig for your own fossil. So what was the design concept? First of all, it was to integrate this building into this beautiful natural setting. And therefore, the material strategy is really important. That wood cladding made by Resawn is instrumental in giving it a natural feel so that it feels like it belongs here. In addition to that, we had this idea though, which is about the power of the quarry. It's an opening in the earth that lets us see 66 million years back in time. We wanted to create a series of openings in these gallery volumes, what we call lenses. And those lenses, like the quarry opening, bridge the past and the present, but it also bridges the now and our possible future. So Lakeisha, we are descending into a fossil quarry and every footfall brings us back an average of 300,000 years. Wow. New Jersey is actually the cradle of dinosaur paleontology. The world's first tyrannosaur found one mile from here, and now the best window into the final days of the dinosaurs is right here in this quarry. As a dinosaur hunter, can I call you that? If you'd like. <laughs> what makes this space so unique? We have this really important research layer, but above that, we have layers where the public can collect fossils for themselves. And every kid, every grown up who comes here makes their own authentic discovery. I could find a fossil? By the end of today, you will find a fossil. So, Michael, you're the experience designer. That's right, so we develop what's called the visitor experience, and that's everything that visitors see, hear, feel that tells the story of the exhibitions and the exhibition design. You can see we're about to go into the first gallery called the Cretaceous World, but before we do that, the exhibition begins here with you, because everybody who comes here is an explorer and a scientist, and so you get this, what we call the explorer key. I get to become an explorer? That's right, oh, here you go. You're gonna use that throughout the exhibitions. Now let's go back in time. Let's go. Our work is all about creating really unique and memorable spaces and experiences. And so in this gallery, that means putting visitors back inside the Cretaceous world of 66 million years ago. You can see this natural environment that we pulled together where we choreograph the illustrated murals, sculptures, scenic recreation, graphic design, dynamic lighting and projection. What's really amazing about this place is that it's all right here and outside. If you look through that window, you can see the fossil dig out there and the fossils at the bottom of that dig are right here brought to life in this gallery. So I'm an explorer. What do I do with my key? Well, so your job as an explorer is to find fossils. So as you look around these galleries, you're gonna find these fossils hidden. You touch them with your explorer key and see them light up to know that you found them. This is the Gallery of Monstrous Seas, Lakeisha. And what's really special about this place is that everything you see here was found on the property. We were underwater here 66 million years ago. So it's quite probable that, for instance, a mosasaur of that size was in that exact position at some point. Oh my goodness. Lakeisha, this is one of my favorite spots. It's the Overlook. You can see this beautiful museum and you have a view to the ancient past. So Ken, why look into the past? Well, you know, I would probably say I'm more interested in the future, but the thing about the future is we don't have access to it. Nobody remembers the future. Nobody can do experiments in the future. And when you think about it, the present is nothing, right? The sentence I'm speaking now is already in your past. So the past is all we have. And it was Winston Churchill who said, the further back you look, the further ahead you can see. And if we really want to understand this very uncertain environmental future that we are sailing into, you have to look at Earth's deep time records. When you start to talk to the rocks, they start to whisper back at you, 
There have been five previous mass extinctions, all of them caused by climate crises. And now what are we doing? We are causing a climate crisis and a biodiversity crisis. And the mission of this museum is to discover the past and protect the future. So everything we have in here are fossils that we found on the property. And over the last 17 years, we have collected over 100,000 fossils representing over 100 extinct species. So these are the remains of a crocodile. You can see the corner of its jaw here. You can touch it if you want. Here is the bottom shell called the plastron of a very big sea turtle. Oh, I love turtles. <laughs> These are actually some of the most informative fossils that we find. You can hold that if you like. Now, if you want to sound all fancy and scientific, you can call this a coprolite. Or you, but what does it really Or you mean? could call it fossil poo. Oh, wow. Which is what it is. 66 million year old poo. Yes. This is the femur, the thigh bone, of a giant dinosaur that I discovered in Patagonia in Argentina. Wow. I named this dinosaur Dreadnoughtus because in life, it was 65 tons, the mass of nine T-Rex, or about 10 tons heavier than a Boeing 737. So Andy, this experience is just as much about the future as it is the past. How does the building play into that? One of the really critical aspects of this building was being able to tell the sustainability story. And that comes out in a lot of ways from passive design to a high performance building envelope to the material selection. So if you look around the lobby, what you're seeing is glue laminated timber beams, columns and roof decking by Western Arch Rib. Then you have this fantastic south facing glass wall by Unicell Architectural and all of our material selections down to the carpet in the retail store, we've used a recycled content material that is also biophilically designed so it looks like lichen. It's called the Lichen Collection by Mohawk. I also hear you're saving birds. That's right. So we have a product that we've used on the exterior of the building, an Ornolux product by Arkin Glass, which is specifically made to prevent bird collisions. I think I found one. <laughs> yes, you did. Can I take it home? You can. Am I now the dinosaur hunter? Let's not get carried away. Uh. <laughs>